Annyeonghaseyo, Annyeonghaseyo, hey you. It's Italia, and welcome to a few days in my life as a language student here at KU. Yes, we are at KU. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, I just realized you can't tell, but that's like the Bongwan, like the main building of KU, like the one that everybody knows, the iconic one. But um, yes, uh, as I mentioned in my last vlog, this is my last semester here at the language school. I am repeating the research class or the last class, the one that I have been referring to as level seven for your convenience. Um, uh, oh my gosh, midterms were last week, last last week. So the semester is like halfway over now and I'm starting to feel a little emotional, a little concerned. I'm like, this is my home though. This has been my home for like almost the past year now. Like in seven days, I will have come to Korea exactly a year ago. <sighs> so I have about a little over an hour before my class starts and I actually have some homework that I haven't done that I really need to do. So we're going to rush to the Tusom that is in the law school, which if you've never been here and you haven't noticed in my videos, the law school is right next to the language center. So um, we're gonna run over to the Tusom. Okay, not run, but we're going to quickly power walk to the Tusom so Natalia can do her homework and be a good student. Good student, yes, I'm not one, but we will pretend. So, let's go. Hold on, why can't you stay a little longer? You got me, got me going under. I'm a weak child. it's so humid that this BT21 fan is like saving my life every day. <laughs> Okay, so I have finished both the articles. I don't know if I added text for context, but in the research class, we have to do presentations on news articles. So, oh, the last vlog, I talked about mine, right? I think I'm pretty sure I did. That was like two weeks ago, so I was like, I don't remember. I think I did. I talked about stalking. <laughs> I hate myself. Anyway, um, so today there are two classmates presenting different articles the first article was on how a lot of people are going to visit this big tree that had an appearance in the Isangan Hyeongwu drama like the it's really popular right now in Korea and from what you guys have told me it's really popular uh, abroad as well or at least among like K-drama fans. Anyway, this article is talking about how there's this really big tree that shows up in the drama and now a ton of people are going to visit this really rural city to go see this tree and people are concerned that the tree is gonna get hurt because all these people are going to see it. <laughs> and then the other article that my other classmate chose is actually about a really recent issue. I mean the tree issue is also very recent but this issue was like announced like two days ago I think or like it started making headlines about two days ago Korea is trying to lower the entry age for public schooling so they're trying to take it from six years old to five years old and there's like they're receiving a lot of backlash about it because people are like um five-year-olds don't need to be going to school like they should be playing like their cognitive abilities aren't ready for education yet or at least not formal education not to mention all of the um, like facility expansions and like the the financial implications of bringing a whole nother year's worth of students into schools like schools aren't ready for that there's not like enough teachers for that they're talking about all of that in this article which this article is a lot shorter than the tree article which is kind of funny because I think it's a much more serious issue but um yeah okay so for like these presentations and stuff the person that selected the article is going to lead like a class discussion basically um so I don't know what the discussion questions are I just need to know enough vocab to express my ideas so I think I should be able to do that fingers crossed um yeah, I think I'm just going to look over these articles a little bit more and then we're going to go head to class. Ooh! <laughs> hello, hello. 
excuse me, I hope you guys don't mind me jumping in very quickly to talk about the sponsor of today's video link. So if you guys remember, about this time, and by this time I mean October that I'm filming this little additional segment, not the summertime month that this actual video was filmed. I'm behind, I know, I, I, I know I'm sorry. But anyway, uh, about this time, aka October, Two years ago, I released a video interviewing Steve Kaufman, one of the most famous polyglots in the language learning community about how he learns languages from scratch. And in that video, he emphasized that two of the things that he focuses on or he thinks just in general language learners should focus on when first learning a language are one, staying motivated or finding a way to stay motivated and two, learning vocabulary in context, especially learning it with content that you are passionate about, that you are interested in. And with these things in mind, he co-founded uh, the language learning platform, Link. Link gives you the ability to import content that you would like to study with, that you are interested in, into its content library so that you can start learning new phrases and vocabulary from that content right away. So some of the places that you can import content from are YouTube, Netflix, online newspaper articles, podcasts, blogs, basically anything that has text, closed captioning, or a script. So for my K-pop fans, like me, this is really bright, I am aware, I swear it's purple right now, and if you don't know what the heck I'm holding, this is the BTS, like the newest, um, Uwampong. what's that in English? Like, it's not light stick, it's like a cheer stick. That's what the word is in Korean. It literally means cheer stick, but in English, we just call it a light stick. So for my K-pop fans, <laughs> for my fellow K-pop fans, with Link, you can import music videos. You can import your V lives. You can import your interviews that are on YouTube so that you can study with them. I know you guys already do this, but Link will help you do it more efficiently. So if you've seen any of the How I Study Korean with BTS lyrics videos that I have made, which I know you guys have seen them because they have a lot of views. Basically, I would spend a lot of time looking up the lyrics, putting them into like a Word document or a Pages document, then highlighting the words, then pulling out a dictionary, like my Korean dictionary app and looking up the words, writing them down. Basically, there was a lot of little steps that weren't necessarily helping me learn the words or the content that I wanted to learn. But with Link, you import the song, for example, and Link will say, hey, Natalia, let me highlight the words you don't know in blue, and I need you to tell me, do you know this word or do you not? And you say, yes, Link, I know that word, or no, I don't know that word, and then it turns yellow and it's added to this giant library of words that you need to learn or review, and it brings up definitions for you on the side. It says, hey, Natalia, these are the potential definitions of this word, which like, you might think like, Natalia, how am I gonna know if it's the right definition? It is. They're all like the same definition. It's basically just asking you, do you want the hanja there too? Yes or no? It basically just makes the whole studying process a lot easier. And if you've ever heard me talk about Link before, I want to let you know there is like a new version of it. It looks really nice, I'm not gonna lie. It looks very new, very like clean. I don't know if that's the right word to describe a, like a language learning platform, but it feels very clean. <laughs> also guys, I do want to point out that there is a free version of Link that you can use to try out the platform, see if it's something that will benefit you, if it's something that you think will be fun and engaging for you, which like, if you're importing your own content, I don't see why it wouldn't be fun and engaging, but you, you know, you gotta try it out for yourself, see if you enjoy it, but I do wanna say, if you wanna get the most out of Link, you should really consider upgrading to the paid version. There's a 35% off discount uh, for you if you use the link in my description box, so I suggest you, uh, check that out. Anyway, that is the end of this section of the video. I'm gonna send you back now, back to the summer. I'm sorry, I'm so behind. Also, I did go to the BTS concert a few days ago. <sighs> Amazing. And also they just announced that Jin is gonna go to the military and I like, I'm not, I'm not gonna say I cried cause I didn't cry, but I did have like a tear, like one. Cause then, I, and then I thought of Hobi going and then I actually started to like, drill. anyway. Um, thank you Link for sponsoring today's video. She says after talking about BTS. Um, and guys, don't forget that there is a link in the description box for you. Okay, I'm sending you back to the summer. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see you when I see you.
guys, it started drizzling, but I am too lazy to take out my umbrella. Hi, hello from under my umbrella. Can you hear the rain? Probably. Why am I yelling? Um <laughs> Okay, so I just got out of class. It is pouring like Boring. Um, so I'm trying my best not to get too wet, but we're gonna do what I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going with, where I was going with that. But basically, today in class, um, we watched a documentary talking about the differences in the language for Asian and Western people. Um, I'll put the name of the documentary uh, in the description box, as well as the articles that my classmates presented. Oh my gosh, it's getting worse. Um, <laughs> It was really interesting. I mean, I've seen this documentary before. We watched it last semester and I'm gonna go hide under a tree because it's getting worse. Okay, one second. So we are safely under a tree now and I'm gonna continue to tell you what we studied in class today. So the documentary, like I said, was talking about the differences in how Asian people and Western people uh, see the world and how a lot of that is rooted in language, which obviously there's a ton of different reasons why we have differences in our cultures and things like that but this documentary was specifically exploring the differences uh, that are rooted in language and one of the things that i found the most interesting that they talked about in the documentary was that in english we focus more on nouns while in many asian languages they focus more on verbs so that was really cool but yeah it's, it's really interesting i like that documentary a lot of it's in english as well like it's a Korean made documentary, but a lot of the professors that are in it are the researchers that are giving interviews for the documentary are American So they speak in English and then there's Korean subtitles. So my teacher kept calling on me to like translate the English I mean, like I said, there are Korean captions But I think she was just trying to make sure that I did know how to talk about these topics in Korean since I didn't have to read the subtitles like everyone else um, but it was funny, I was like, so sick, no, why? <laughs> and then at the end of class, we started a new chapter, a chapter that is on culture, which yes, I know you might be like, but the documentary you just watched was related to culture. Why wasn't this documentary part of the culture chapter? I don't know, I, I don't know. But anyway, I'm gonna put you guys away. There are literally water droplets on you and I said I would never bring you into wet situations once I got uh, dropped you in that creek. before my camera dies. Yeah, hi, I'm the friend, I'm Cherie. Yeah, <laughs> she has a YouTube channel, link in the description box. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Um, so per the usual, Cherie and I had a lot 
lots to talk about. Yes. To the point where I kind of forgot to film up until Sheree was like, do you want to film anything? And I was like, <laughs> my brain, I was like, of what? <laughs> I was like, um, you're filming today. She's like, Natalia, you're vlogging. I was like, oh yeah. So I got a few clips of Gogi, but that's it. <laughs> and now we're at the High Waist Cafe, which I've brought you guys to before. Um, we're just gonna be chit chatting some more while having cake and beverages. Look. Boom. I'll show you more aesthetic clips. <laughs> aesthetic. Aesthetic clips. They're not actually that aesthetic. Natalia is too concerned about her battery dying to take <laughs> multiple shots to make everything look nice. Um, so just know we got really nice cake and coffees and aids and dumb um, perfection. We're just gonna be us. <laughs> <laughs> this is us when we hang out, you guys. <laughs> Whenever I come onto the vlog, it's always chaotic. So. <laughs> she brings her own vlogging style into my videos. That's what Somehow. happens. That's what happens. <laughs> You should go, you can check out Sheree's vlogs and then you'll know what we're talking yes. about. <laughs> I feel like my vlogs are very like, I don't want to say they're always chill, but like they're very like, you're yeah. aesthetic, I'm yeah. chaotic. And then Sheree's like, I'm so aesthetic. There'll be a clip of you getting off a bus and you'll like remove the sound. And it's like, not like, not like the music is gone and it's just you fumbling <laughs> like, da, 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 da. <laughs> you'll be like, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's me and I'll be like, oh no, I gotta cut that. I gotta get that out of there. <laughs> we get both sides of Korea. <laughs> Hi, hello, from Namsan Tower. Yes, like actually, like Namsan Tower. Um, <laughs> I know this is supposed to be a school vlog, and I was gonna take you to do so many things on campus. I was gonna take you to my club meeting like I did last time, like in the last student vlog that I did. I was gonna take you to class again, talk more about what we were studying, how we were studying, and then um, things happened. Natalia kept forgetting her camera, Natalia didn't feel good, Things happened, and so I felt, I almost wanted to just like throw away this whole video and be like, it's okay, I'll try again next week, but then I was like, no, I tried hard on Tuesday to take you to class. I thought maybe we could just end this video with a Q&A. Um, I prepared some questions that you guys asked me back in September of last year, so almost a year ago, yes, uh, about a year ago, I had asked you guys what questions you have for me about language school because I wanted to make a whole video based on your questions which I still want to do but my perfectionism is getting to me to the point where I have not made it. So there might be people like walking back and forth behind me because I'm on like one of the decks here at Namsan so if you see people and they stare at me it's probably because you be looking huge. I'll insert a picture of what you look like right now. Actually let me take it hold on say cheese okay Okay, I'm gonna put this in the video so you can see how silly we are. We are together. We are two fools, lots of fools, lots of clowns together. Anyway, okay, so I prepared some questions. Can absolute beginners attend KU or is it just for higher levels? Uh, beginners can attend. People that don't even know how to read Hangul can attend KU. Like it's meant for people to start from zero and then go all the way up to level six which is the same as like topic level six or go on to level uh to the research class which is the class that i'm in which is like higher than level six or rather an extension i would say of advanced korean did you get medical insurance in korea if so was it before or after quarantine so yes i do have medical insurance here it's um the national korean insurance however as a language student or as a student on a D4 visa, which is the Yeonban Yeonsu visa, um, you're not eligible for it until you've been in Korea for longer than six months. So uh, to answer your question, it was much later, way after I'd been out of quarantine. Um, I didn't look into any type of like traveler's insurance or like international travel insurance or anything like that just because I like to live on the crazy, like what's it called? 
on the wild side or something like that. The longer I'm out of the US, the less I remember English. <laughs> but yeah, I like to be risky, I guess. No, actually I just didn't want to pay for it. But um, yeah, so you won't be getting Korean health insurance until you've been here for longer than six months. Um, and then it costs about 51,000 won a month, I think, for students. You know, I should know. I should know what it costs because I literally paid it last night. But um, yeah, I think it's about 51,000 won for students. Is there an age limit to attend language school? No, not that I know of. Um, if you guys remember my roommate from my first semester, uh, Riley, she actually had like a harmony in her class, in her like level one class. There was an older lady from China. However, I will say the majority of the students here at uh, KLC are between the ages of 18 to 21. Yeah, they're, they're babies. Like the majority of the students that come here for language school are actually Asian students that are planning to go to university here in Korea. So they come straight out of high school to do this language program and then while they're in the upper levels of the language program they apply to university and then uh, most of them get into like their schools and they you know go on to university so while there isn't an age limit I will definitely say if you're older than 22 you're probably gonna be the oldest person in your class like I was the oldest person in all my classes or all four semesters now I've been the oldest person by several years and I'm 26 or I turned 26 here in Korea so I came at the age of 25. Do you write essays in Korean? If so, how does your Korean compare to your classmates? Um, yes, so we write lots of essays. I would say the number of like actual essays depends on the level that you're in as well as whether you're in the regular Korean program or if you're in the advanced Korean program. So when I was in level 5 or my first semester here at KLC, I was in the academic version of the course. So we wrote a lot of essays. I want to say one every other week. And the course is like three months long, so it was a lot of essays. Um, but now that I'm in the research class, we only write, I think, four essays the whole semester. I think. Ish. Um, and then in terms of like how my Korean writing skills compare to my classmates, honestly, I don't really know. We don't like compare writing samples or anything. We don't have to like, oh my gosh. So when I was an exchange student for like the writing section of my courses, we would, the teacher would write like parts of an essay from a student, like student in the classroom, she would write a part of the essay and then want us all to go up on the board and correct it. It was horrible, but we don't do that at KU. So I've actually never seen any of my classmates writing. So I don't know, but honestly, I would assume they're probably better than me at writing. I'm, I'm not that great at writing, like essay writing. Like I, I can do it, but it's not as good as what my classmates are probably writing, honestly. How many hours a day do you attend language school for? Four, so it's four hours every day up until you're in the research class. Once you're in the research class, it's only four times a week instead of five but um, you're not necessarily in class, in class for four hours, if that makes sense. So we're in class for about 45 minutes, then we have a 10 minute break, then we're in class for about another like 45, 50 minutes, and then we take a 20 minute break, and then we have another 45 minutes and 45 minutes-ish. So I wanna say the actual instruction time is probably closer to just over three hours but it is like a total of like four hours of your day. Did you have to send your application documents to KU by mail? Yes. Yes, unfortunately, yes. Um, everything has to be sent by mail. So like make sure you have all your documents done correctly. Make sure they have the signatures. Make sure they have all these stamps. Make sure they have the apostles. If you have any questions, email the like administration's office for the language center because it can be very expensive to ship documents to Korea. Like I, if you watched my moving video, I had an issue with one of, uh, or two of my documents actually. So I had to pay $75 to like the post office to ship my application to Korea the first time and then another $75 to ship it again. It was really expensive. So you wanna do it right the first time. Are you allowed to work as a student in Korea? Yes, but it's kind of 
complicated in terms of it depends on which student visa you're on but as a language student we are not allowed to work until we've been in Korea for uh, more than six months yes uh, you also have to have an attendance rate of over 90% for all semesters that you have been in Korea um, and then I believe there's also a topic requirement I think you're not allowed to work unless you have topic 3 or topic 4 and then even then they limit the number of hours you can work until you have topic 5 or 6 um, so yeah I want to say most of the students in the program don't work they're very privileged like including myself a very privileged we don't work um, and with the few students that do work um, I mean yeah I mean they're they're there but there's not that many I think over the course of the year that I've been here at Korea University studying Korean in my program I think there's only been four students I've ever met that actually do any type of part-time work so honestly I don't think it's something you should like count on in terms of coming here like you're not going to be able to make like the whole tuition and all your room and board and all your food expenses and everything like that off of part-time work so um, I'm not trying to be discouraging I just want you to be realistic with you're trying to like determine what you can and can't afford in terms of like staying here um, in Korea as a student and then this question kind of piggybacks off the last question in terms of moving to Korea and going to language school was it an out-of-pocket situation or did you get scholarships uh, I am completely self-funding all of this like this whole year that I've been living in Korea is off of money that I saved while working full-time at like an office job uh, for about two and a half years so I wasn't saving to move to Korea for two and a half years I think I was only saving to come here for a year and a half or so um, but I was saving a lot of money like I was saving starting from like 25 30 percent of my paycheck for a few months and then I bumped it up to like over 50 percent of my paycheck um, to come to Korea so I saved up a lot of money like a lot of money and then of course like I do get some money from YouTube and from sponsorships when I do those um, so yeah it's I would say it's all self-funded I don't do part-time work outside of YouTube which even with YouTube I don't make like a crazy amount of money or anything like that um, it's more like nice pocket money uh, and then in terms of scholarships I am not on one and I don't know anyone that is on one. Oh my goodness the wind okay I hope the wind didn't like slap your ears too hard um, but in terms of scholarships I don't know anyone that's on one honestly like KU only has language student scholarships for students that are currently enrolled and even on top of that like it, they're very very competitive like I wouldn't count on getting one at all like it's one okay from what my understanding of the scholarships is because they don't even give information on them it's like one little sidebar or like one little like fine print line on the brochure it's like you have to be at the top of your class and over my time here at KLC there have been students that literally get a hundred on everything like they're that good at Korean so it I don't think it's smart to assume you're gonna get one or think that you have a good chance of getting one I know that sounds really discouraging again but like honestly if there's only one per level and there's seven not even seven because you won't get one in level seven there's only six levels it's unlikely you're gonna be the best I'm sorry like they're all academic with the exception of one. Oh my goodness there's helicopters I've never seen helicopters here okay anyway um, there's only one that isn't based on academics and it's based on motivation and you have to have been here at the school for over two semesters in order to even get it and it has to be like your teachers over the course of, like over the semesters that you've been here at school have to have thought that you were very a very motivated student and very engaged in the classroom and things like that so it's again really hard to get like it's unlikely you will be the student that gets it so yeah don't I wouldn't count on scholarships at all if that's something that you were cons like thinking that you might have a chance at like obviously you have a chance but it's not a chance that I think you should bank on at all how long are you allowed to stay at the dorms as a language student one semester <laughs> you oh, I wish KU let us stay for as long as we were enrolled in the language school but they do not due to um, capacity limits 
So only new students, like new students in the language school are allowed to even apply to stay in the dorms. And then on top of that, we're only allowed to stay one semester. So that's why like, I had to move into an apartment at the end of my fall semester. Like if I could have stayed in the dorms, I would have stayed in the dorms. Like they're really affordable, they're pretty nice. Um, the view was really great. The stairs, not great, but the view was very nice. Um, and it was very like nice to be like, I'm on campus. I am like, the people that I see in the hallway are the people that are in language school. Like it was nice, um, like sense of belonging, I guess. But um, yes, unfortunately you can only stay a semester if you even get into the dorms. Cause if you're a female, like you need to apply as soon as the application process opens because so many people want to stay in the dorms that they're rejected. So yes. And then if you're a male, like my first semester, any of the guys that were in the dorms that wanted to stay for their second semester were allowed to stay because there were so many vacancies in the male dorm. Because like, so the dorm that the language students are put in is Frontier, which is an undergraduate Korean dorm. So the only international students in that dorm are the like full-time undergraduate students that are just happen to be not Korean. Um, and then the language students. So because when I started, they're like, the majority of KU's classes were online. Uh, there were a lot of Korean students that just didn't come or didn't want a dorm because they were like, why would I pay for a dorm when my classes are online? So there were so many vacancies that the guys were allowed to stay if they wanted to stay because there was space for them. But for like the girls right in the female dorm, there were not any available like vacancies for us to stay. Do you recommend a certain level of proficiency before going to language school? This is actually a really good question, and I do. I think you should be intermediate already before coming to language school if you can only stay for one semester or two semesters. Like obviously, if you are able to do the whole program, then it doesn't matter what level you're at. Most people only stay for one semester or two semesters. Um, like most people that aren't coming from Asian countries. Let me rephrase that. Um, so if you can only stay for six months, then I think you should already be intermediate because when you're at the intermediate level, you can actually like go into like Korean society and speak Korean to people. You can actually go and make like Korean friends that only speak Korean. Um, you can really like go out and practice what you're learning in class. Like when you're a beginner, you're still like very timid. You're still like limited, like your knowledge of Korean is so limited that even if you go out into like the wild to use your Korean, I feel like it won't get you too far in terms of like helping you advance in your like journey of learning Korean, as opposed to if you're intermediate already, you can advance a lot faster through like speaking with natives, through going out and using your Korean. Um, so I think you should be like at least intermediate before coming like to the language school if you can only stay for a few months or like two semesters. If you can stay longer, again, it doesn't matter, but yeah, the, that's my two cents on that. What's your KU study schedule like? How many hours, what type of study and homework, etc. So this is also like a really good question. Um, okay, so in level five, honestly, I think level five was like the hardest class out of like the three that I've taken, right? Um, level five gave us the most homework. In my opinion, we had so many presentations, so many essays, so much vocabulary to learn, so much grammar we always needed to review. Like, you needed to go to class, right, for the four hours, and then go home or go to a cafe and study. Like, I spent so many weekends studying. Like, I couldn't do anything. All I could do was study. And I know, like, if you saw those vlogs from the fall, you might be like, mm, Natalia, like, it didn't seem like you were studying all the time. Yeah, because I wasn't going to take you studying with me. It gets boring and it gets repetitive. But like there were so many sleepless nights of just studying. It was really exhausting. And honestly, the school, oh my gosh, there are kids screaming. And if they come over here, I'm sorry. Um, but like there were so many times where the language school, because like you're here to learn Korean. So they don't take into account that you might have made plans. Like they will assign something to you the night before or two nights before and be like, hey, you are going to give a presentation on this like topic in two days the three minute presentation you need to memorize it you can't have notes like that type of situation or you need to like write this whole essay that you have to like research information for and like it's due in two days like i remember getting really really oh, okay hold on <laughs> okay i don't know exactly where 
I stopped talking because I got distracted. Once the kids started running around, like I just completely lost my train of thought. I think I was talking about essays. If I wasn't, I'm sorry. But um, in level five, like there are times where you actually have to do research on your essay topic. And so they'll give you like two days to do it. And like obviously if you're here as like a student, especially if you're only here for like one semester, you're gonna be trying to go out, right? You're gonna try and like go to all these nice cafes, go to like the palaces, go like experience so many things. And the fact that they give you short notice like can really mess you up. Or at least it really messed me up. I remember being like frustrated all the time because they would tell us like, hey, you have this due two days from now, congrats. And I'd be like, I don't have time. Like I already made plans, I already made commitments to people, like I'm supposed to go do this and go do that. And it was really, really stressful for me. Um, so for level five, there was a lot of homework, a lot of studying involved. For level six, it was a lot more chill. Like I've talked to some other people and they thought level six was a lot harder than level five. Honestly, I thought level six was pretty easy compared to level five. Like, yes, there was still a lot of studying involved. We still had honestly just as much homework, but I don't know, there was something about it to where it wasn't as hard. And then for level seven, we don't get homework that often, like ever. Like, is there a lot of studying involved? Yes, oh my goodness, this win. So yeah, we don't have a lot of homework in level seven. We don't have like as many presentations. We don't have as many essays. Um, and there's a lot less vocab that we need to study. Honestly, I would say level seven is the least amount of work. Like it's the hardest. Like I tried to explain this in my video talking about how like I was the dumbest in class last semester, but the content is really hard, but like there's not a lot of like prep work that you need to do because you don't know that you need certain like words or certain expressions until you're already having that discussion in class, which it's not a discussion that you're necessarily going to be tested on later either. So expect to study a lot. Basically, if you're trying to like actually learn Korean and actually like move up in the program, you're going to be studying a lot more than like studying more than you are going to be like enjoying Seoul, honestly. Okay, so that was actually the last question. Oh my goodness. Um, I hope you found this like portion of the video insightful, helpful, maybe answer some of your questions. Um, I know I picked questions from September of last year, literally, like I said, almost a year ago, like 11 months ago. Um, so you've been waiting for these questions or responses for a long time, but I'm sorry. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Tell me about you guys. Bye! <laughs>